Hey, what's happening guys? Brian Tong here and welcome to the Apple Byte for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now we're giving you an in-depth preview of what to expect at WWDC 2011. The winners of our iPad 2 giveaway will be announced and much more, so let's get to the show. Apple officially announced that WWDC will be all about software with Mac OS X Lion, iOS 5, and their anticipated iCloud service. Steve Jobs will be part of the keynote, and that pretty much means it's going to be a big deal. Apple's iCloud service is arguably the most intriguing out of these three amigos, and CNET's own Greg Sandoval reported that Universal Music Group has signed on, which brings all of the big four music labels on board. Now, the Big A has also reached agreements with some of the large music publishers, and we can expect to see more details at WWDC. Now, CNET also reports that the revenue from cloud song sales will be split with the labels getting 58%, the music publishers getting 12%, and Apple taking a 30% cut. Sources say music streaming will not be available on Monday, but it will be offered soon, and Apple's digital locker will only store music purchased at iTunes initially, but it plans to store songs acquired outside of iTunes later in the future. CNET also reported earlier that the iCloud service won't be just for music, and the Cupertino kids are racing to license movies and TV shows from Hollywood Studios and TV networks, but we may or may not see those deals come together by Monday's announcement. Now, the LA Times also reports that the iCloud service will initially be free for people who purchase music from iTunes, but the company plans to charge a subscription fee for about $25 a year for the service. Now, $25 for a year, that's 50 tacos from Jack in the Box, and you know what? You can count me in. Now, with all the talk about the iCloud, the software that really will impact the most people is iOS 5. TechCrunch reports that Apple plans to roll out a completely revamped notification system, something that they need desperately, plus widgets like this concept video that would provide quick access to information without the need for launching an app. Now, if it sounds kind of like Android, well, you're right. Now, Google and Apple just renewed their contract to have Google Maps and Search as a standard part of iOS, but they'll need to bring in improved maps with turn-by-turn -turn directions in iOS 5 to keep up with the competition. Plus, voice to text for messages and voice searching will need to be integrated. It's not asking too much, but I'm really expecting a lot out of iOS 5. Now, we've shown you also a lot of the key features in Mac OS X Lion, and according to Apple Insider, the latest developer build of Mac OS 10.6.8 gets users ready for an upgrade to Lion directly through the Mac App Store. We've had our hands on Lion over the past two months, but forget about those features. You know what's the most important thing? All new desktop backgrounds. For example, bristle grass. Pocket full of posy, we all fall out. Elephant. <laughs> and forest in mist. Fantastic. See, the one thing you don't know about me, I could really fly. Now onto the quick bites. Keynote, Pages, and Numbers are now universal apps on iOS, bringing the apps to the iPhone and iPod Touch. So word process, spreadsheet, and slideshow away on your three and a half inch screen. Now we also told you how Apple's legal team was granted access to unreleased hardware from Samsung in their ongoing legal battle of you copied me and I copied you. So Samsung, they took a page out of Apple's playbook and they've requested that they get access to Apple's iPad 3 and Apple's iPhone 4S or 5 and other next generation devices. Well played, Samsung. Now, Apple has released an update for Mac OS X that includes a native malware removal tool that detects that dirty Mac Defender and maintains an anti-malware definitions list. Then, a new version of Mac Defender was written to circumvent the OS X update, so now Apple has updated their definitions to detect this new one. See, this game of cat and mouse, it's coming to your Mac, and you know me, I hate cats and I hate mice. Unless it's that cute Stuart little guy. Like, seriously, how could you hate a mouse that cute? He's so cute. And this story comes from the department of do not ever do this. The Shanghai Daily is reporting that a 17-year-old kid sold one of his own kidneys in exchange for money to buy an iPad 2 he could not afford. He was paid about $3,400 US dollars. The surgery was arranged by a broker and he used the money to buy the iPad. Now, here's a red flag, people. When you hear the word kidney surgery and a broker from the internet in the same sentence, don't do it. That's a serious bad apple, and honestly, we just hope the kid is okay. All right, let's get to the winners of our power support HD 
anti-glare shield contest giveaway. We asked you to tell us the color of Angry Birds you saw hanging from my office, and the answer is red, yellow, black, and blue. We can't get anything past you guys, so congratulations to Gary Kant, Alden Wong, Ravi Srinivas, Nancy Montoya, and Chris Navarez. We'll be contacting you, and remember, you guys can go to their website for a discount with the code CNET15. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Get ready for the WWDC announcements on Monday. Send us your emails and questions to theapplebyte.cnet.com. I'm Brian Tong, and we'll see you next week for another Bite of the Apple.